It's not your camera that's holding you back, it's you. Hello and welcome to Cinematic Sensei. I'm your host, Benjamin Curley. So a lot of the time, it's not actually the gear itself that's holding us back. It's actually us, our lack of knowledge, our lack of experience that is holding us back from creating better video. Last week, I gave you some things that you need to think about before upgrading your gear. This week, I wanna talk about some of the things that your gear is limited in and how you can have the knowledge to overcome it and create better video. One of the biggest limitations that consumer low-end gear has is dynamic range. What is dynamic range? Dynamic range is the spectrum of light that your camera's sensor is capable of capturing from its lowest to its brightest. Most low-end consumer cameras are only capable of anywhere from 9 to maybe at best 11 stops of dynamic range a stop being the unit of measure for light in the cinematography world. So when you have parts of your image that are underexposed or overexposed, what that means is that the spectrum of light has moved outside of the range of your camera's sensor. Higher end cameras, film cameras and digital cameras are capable of anywhere from 13 to 16 stops of dynamic range, a much wider spectrum. What that means is that those cameras are capable of seeing a larger amount of light before it becomes underexposed or overexposed. Here is a comparison between my Blackmagic Cinema camera that has 13 stops of dynamic range versus my iPhone 6S Plus that I would guess probably has about nine stops of dynamic range. So what does that mean? Well, it means that you need to be able to get the most range out of your camera possible. And when you're filming a scene, you need to control the lighting to bring it within the range that your camera is capable of filming. This footage that you're seeing was shot on my Canon T2i. The camera used runs for less than $300. I'm also using the kit lens on it. Why would I do that when I have a Blackmagic camera in the other room? Because I wanna show you what a cheaper camera is really capable of if you control the lighting well. So take a look at these shots. Depending on how we film it, we may have areas that are too bright, overexposed. What we can do is we can cut that light, we can diffuse it and bring it down into a manageable level so it fits within the spectrum. We've got certain areas of the scene that are too dark. Well, we can bounce the light and add more lighting to those dark areas to bring it again up into the spectrum that the camera sensor is capable of. One thing you may need to do is you may need to reconsider how you're shooting it. You may need to reposition people so that you get the best lighting possible working within what you have available. There are some artistic things that you can use this lower dynamic range to your advantage. Having this lower dynamic range allows you to really get nice blown out windows if that's what you want artistically. If you want the windows to just glow and you don't want to see what's outside, that is very possible with a camera with lower dynamic range. To be able to silhouette things very easily, you can do that in camera and you don't have to work with that in post later. Now, some of the ways to maximize your dynamic range in camera would be to adjust the settings in your camera, and you can find these all over the web. Everyone talks about this, getting that cinematic image. All they're doing is they're lowering the contrast to increase the dynamic range just slightly to get you a better image. There are a couple things you can do in post to manipulate the perceived dynamic range and make your camera look better. One of those things that is typically done is, again, lowering the contrast, bringing up the blacks, bringing down the highlights. This is not crushing blacks or crushing highlights. That would be the opposite if you brought them super dark and super bright. That is crushing. This is bringing up, gradually bringing down, bringing it within a range where it looks less contrasty, more gradual, more filmic. So it's manipulating people's eyes into thinking that your camera has a wider dynamic range than it actually does. So this is just one of the first things that may make you think that you need a newer camera to get past. I hope this has opened up your eyes to see that your older camera is capable of a lot more than you might think. All cameras have their limits, even the really expensive high-end production cameras have limits that have to be worked around. Cinematography is an art and there are a lot of different facets of this art form that you need to learn, especially as a solo shooter. So I hope this episode has been helpful to you, understanding dynamic range and how to work around it, how to get as much as you can and increase the quality of your image. 
I will be covering more things like this in the near future, so please like and subscribe and share this with your filmmaking friends. You've been watching Cinematic Sensei. I'm your host, Benjamin. Thank you for watching.